Welcome to Build Out, where real engineers face off building fake products. Today's challenge, the smart guard. I'm Red Amaya, the inevitable winner, which means this is Colt McCandless, the only one of us who's actually done any real engineering. Whose thumb is the greenest? Find out now on Build Out. Colt lost the coin toss, so now he has to go first. He'll have four minutes to describe his smart garden solution, including one arbitrary VP requirement. I'll then have three minutes to respond. This week, our VP of engineering has mandated that we use... The Tasks API. Yes, the Google Cloud Tasks API. Yes, the Google Tasks API. But we know that YouTube comments solve all known problems, so when we're done, you get to decide which one of us solved the problem better by adding a comment of your own to our video. I've got the winning solution, and I'm about to prove it. Colt's from Las Vegas, and well, I put Las Vegas landscaping into Google, and it's just rocks, cactus, and mesquite bushes. Did anyone show Colt a picture of a garden? Real gardeners know that it's not a passive hobby. It requires daily maintenance, water, sunlight, and attention to make sure that those plants are growing and yielding fruit in the optimal ways. Yielding fruit? Oh, does Colt think a garden is an orchard? As such, when I think of a smart garden, I want something that optimizes this process and creates less work for me. Which means I want an upgraded CNC machine. Okay, so no to the does Colt know what a garden is question. It's a freaking CNC machine, for God's sake. That's amazing. The trick here is that instead of a drill bit on the motorized head, our smart garden is fitted with a water spout, a UV light, and a camera to take pictures. We'll also hook it up to some nutrient tanks. So we can use that to spray the plants with extra food. We can replace the cutting area with a plant bed where the plants are placed in trays. Wait, is he still talking about plants? Do any of these diagrams indicate scale? All I see is a six. Is it feet or inches? Feet or inches? You know Colt. Has anyone confirmed this thing isn't for people? Yes, yes, of course it's designed for fruit. Although, it probably could be used for something else. Well? Like flowers. Each tray has a sensor in it to detect the moisture and nutrient levels as well as the general weight, because as the plant grows, the trays are gonna get heavier. Now, most DIY CNC arms are controlled by a Raspberry Pi. Oh, could we get some Pi? Uh, no, a uh, Raspberry Pi, P. I, the, uh, the small single board computer. This is really good pie. But for a smart garden, we need something that has easier interfaces to internet connectivity and sensors. So I'd like to add an Android Things hub, which besides defining the logic on driving the arm, can also collect sensor data from the plant nutrient tanks and communicate that with the internet. The hub also gives us a client-side endpoint to receive logic blocks that define the behavior of the arm. Oh, an automated machine for planting and harvesting, driven by self-learning AI. Why does every solution Colt proposes sound like the cause of salvation in an apocalypse movie? Uh, see, there's always a default behavior client side, but based upon the weather data or plant information, we'll want to push down updates to that behavior over time. Now, once a day, the client will go into an analysis mode, where the arm moves around to take photos and sensor readings for each of the plants. Not many people know this, but every Saturday, Colt methodically photographs and measures every tomato in his garden. Tomato. This data is then uploaded to the cloud for analysis, and uh, here is the important part. Once the content is done being uploaded in its entirety, we need to signal our cloud applications to start analysis. One way to do this would be to set a cloud function that fires off once a new GCS bucket gets new analysis sets uploaded, but there's a problem with that, in that currently the max duration for a cloud function is 540 seconds. Carry the one, yeah, that's nine minutes. Which feels a little constrained to me. This is where the Tasks API comes into play. The Google Cloud Tasks API. Once the data is done uploading, the Android Things Hub will ping an App Engine front end, which is responsible for pushing a request to the Tasks API, which sometime later will spin up an App Engine instance to handle the work. Uh, these tasks can run for up to 24 hours. Or, you know, 86,400 seconds so plenty of time for us to do our analysis. Now, we've got the photos of the plants, so we want to recognize things like uh, decay, bugs, fruit, and the size of the leaves. On Sundays, he measures tomato leaf sizes. Tomato. 
To do that, we're going to trade a set of TensorFlow models for each of these scenarios and run our pictures through it in order to gain information about the size, health, and growth of each plant. But here's the complication. We can't get to TensorFlow from App Engine Standard, which means we need to switch over to App Engine Flex and upgrade from the regular App Engine Tasks API to the Cloud Tasks API. And I have access to it, and Rado does not. I don't think any of Colt's code has ever gone into production, so I guess he's more comfortable with alpha software. Once the analysis is done, the results are then pushed to Datastore, which it can be accessed via the admin console, built with Polymer and adhere to material design principle. Oh, a web-based admin console, huh? I guess Colt's still not that comfortable with Android. You know, I do have some extra copies of my book, if he needs one. Are, are you serious? I was an advocate on the Android team, for God's sake. I know how to build an Android app. What's the problem? Did he want me to sign it? This allows our Smart Garden admin to check out the status of everything and then see the trend lines in a nice, consistent manner. Now, in the case that something goes wrong or an action needs to be taken by the farmer, we leverage PubSub to send messages to registered Android devices for creating alerts. Finally, the analysis results will be combined with local weather, day and night cycles, and sensor data to create and update new behavior patterns for the arm. So I, I think I missed an opportunity here. I, I should have also used TensorFlow to control the arm in a more fine-grained manner. Uh, it would have been really useful to have it do things like uh, move the arm to remove weeds from the garden. You know, actually, if I increase the speed of the CNC head, I bet I could engineer it to catch bugs or even small animals. Uh, yes, I'm interested in your uh, deluxe edition panic bunker. Uh, yeah, that's uh, apocalypse proof, right? Yeah, I'll hold. This will allow our smart garden to optimize sunlight, watering, and nutrients for each unique plant that it's responsible for, guaranteeing the best growth, health, and fruit yield possible. And that, my friends, is a smart garden. Listen, I gotta tell you, I'm happy with my design. The point of a smart garden should be to alleviate some of the work so that I don't have to do it. This gives me way more time to do other stuff, like write books on data compression. Well, it's good the cult tried. You can really see the effort he's put in here imagining what a garden must be like. It's a little utilitarian for my taste and the dystopian overtones are frankly terrifying, but it's a worthy first effort from Colt, and it shows that he's really trying. Not bad, not bad. There's some, there's some good stuff there. Well, are you ready to respond then? Have the Perth Wildcats appeared in 31 consecutive NBL final series? I don't know and I don't care. Of course they have, because they're from Perth, so they're winners. Let's do this. There's a lot to like about Colt's CNC Death Harvester. It's a good start, but it's lacking in imagination. My design sets your garden free. We take the head off the arm and replicate it, deploying dozens of independent devices, each with its own dedicated water spout, nutrient system, and sensor array around our garden, one alongside each plant, tree, and flower pot. We also incorporate some toys to help with garden maintenance, like an autonomous lawnmower. Yeah, they're, they're a thing, we have one at work. His name's Bob, he hangs out with the self-driving cars. Nice guy, starting to be a web developer. So wait a minute, how exactly are you going to mow a lawn that has IoT devices over it? Seems like it would just sound like <laughs> We still need his Android hub, which collects sensor data from all our devices and connects to the internet. But rather than controlling a single arm, it now monitors and controls the device added to each plant. And Bob. The garden devices connect to each other and the hub using a BTLE mesh. <laughs> There's a engineer somewhere whose personal version of hell is configuring all of Rado's thousand IoT devices to work with Bluetooth. I'm gonna take advantage of my unique Android experience here to add an Android app. I did like a hundred Android videos. Why does no one remember this? Now, normally the whole system will be driven by our cloud service, just like Colt's design, but I want a local peer-to-peer -peer override for modifying the schedule, toggling the sprinklers, or in case Bob figures out how to cut my network cable and begins his inevitable uprising to ultimately enslave. Right, sorry. The Android app is also how we add new plants to the garden. Take a photo of the plant you want to add and then use TensorFlow to recognize it. Listen, this is classic Rado engineering. Using machine learning to complete a task you could do twice as fast, twice as accurately, and 10 times more easily by just typing the name of the plant into the app. Check it out, I've built an app that controls the lights based on my facial expression. I frown to turn them off, and smile to turn them back on. It may need some work. Now I have to admit, most of Colt's cloud implementation is pretty solid, but again, he's lacking imagination. 
To start, I've named my service Ronald, the app engine. Think it might. I think it might. I think it might. Yeah, I'm pretty sure my design's still better. Cult system performs an analysis once a day. Let's expand that to continuously monitor each plant. We'll use PubSub to reliably deliver the real-time readings from every sensor up to Ron. Next, I'll upgrade the Android Hub to use the Firebase real-time database as a way to store the watering and fertilizing schedule that'll sync between the Hub, server, and Android app while still working offline. While we're doing databases, we'll add data store to Ron and populate it with the care instructions for every plant in the world. The only thing is, who can we trust to create that database? <laughs> that sounds like a job for an intern. It feels like maybe this is a cult-sized job. We can adapt Colt's TensorFlow model to adjust those baseline care instructions based on each plant's health readings. Now, Colt's model is static though, so we'll collect all of this data in BigQuery and use it to train newer, more powerful models over time. Now, the Google Tasks API. Uh, Google Cloud Tasks API. I'm not sure why Colt missed it, but I'll use it here to handle all the gardening work that can't be handled automatically. Pruning trees, raking leaves, it all goes into the task list. The restriction was clearly referring to the Cloud Tasks API, which lets you schedule and defer work for a later date. I don't really know what he's talking about here, but that's not what the Tasks API is for. I think Colt was thinking about the Cloud Tasks API. It's an easy mistake to make. Let's let him off the hook this time. No, 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 no. I am not losing points because the Aussie used the wrong API. The tasks are synced on your Android app and you can check them off as they're done. We'll use the app to replace Colt's web-based status view and use Firebase Cloud Messaging to keep it all up to date. Then we can finish off by using Data Studio to visualize our garden stats and add Google Assistant actions to allow us voice controls for local updates and overrides. I'm really happy with that. I'll admit my response added a little complexity, but it's worth it for the flexibility. <laughs> this, this is classic Rado over engineering. It's overcomplicated, expensive, and half of it doesn't even work. You'd get the same result if you printed out the top titles of Hacker News, force-fed them to a platypus, and waited two hours for the result. Now, to be fair though, Bob is actually really cool. Uh, he invited us out on his boat this weekend. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Not bad, not bad. I mean, not good, but not bad. Now, you've seen both of our pictures. Uh, Colt's utilitarian farmless plant box and my response, a peaceful garden, where you're freed from the manual burdens of garden maintenance to relax and enjoy nature. Now, here's the really important part. You decide which of our builds is better by leaving comments below the video. And don't forget to check out our companion podcast, Build Out Rewound, also linked in the description below, where we'll discuss our implementations and explain some of our decisions. Thank you for watching this episode of Build Out. As always, I'm Ray Maya. And I'm Colt McCandless. And always remember, perf matters. Uh, Colt, we heard back from the review judges, and you're right. It's not supposed to be the Google Tasks API. <laughs> In your face. Yeah, or the Cloud Tasks API. Wait, what? What? It says here you were meant to use the Firebase Tasks API. Aren't you supposed to be Android experts?